And I want to take some time to discuss um, layering, layering your clothing. You know, I'm not going to get into the weeds on outerwear, your bibs, your parka, all that kind of stuff. Not really going to touch a ton on boots, things like that. Uh, not the final touches, but I'm going to talk about base layer, some of the nuances, some of these clothing items that I think make or break a day on the ice. You know, whenever I do a fishing, so an ice fishing seminar, let me say, uh, the first thing I always touch on is clothing. The most important element, the most important piece of the puzzle is clothing. If you're not warm, if you're not comfortable, you're not standing on the ice, you're not chasing down fish, you're not going to get the job done. We can talk about all the rods, tackle, fish houses, augers, electronics that we want, but if you're not warm on the ice, if you're not comfortable, it doesn't matter what gear you have. So I'm going to talk about layering. This is going to be kind of a layering 101 and maybe a few advanced tips that I've found to be very useful over the years. Some things that help me stay on the ice. Uh, I always uh, talk about uh, when it comes to uh, fish houses, the most mobile fish house we have available to us is our clothing. If you layer properly, you don't need to be in a fish house all the time. You can run and gun, you can stay on the ice, you can catch more fish. So I'm gonna talk about some of the things I do, starting with what touches your skin. A lot of anglers throw a cotton t-shirt on, a pair of sweatpants or whatever. The first thing that touches your skin needs to wick moisture, it needs to keep that moisture off your body, it needs to keep you comfortable, it needs to help regulate that body temperature. I'm gonna show you a few options in certain styles. Uh, you're gonna have stuff that actually touches your skin. Uh, Blackfish has stuff called NTS, next to skin. And there's a lot of options out there that are similar. So this stuff is gonna be a little more form fitting. This is gonna hug my body. So whether I'm using actual uh, next to skin base layer, whether it's the top or whether it's the bottoms, again, this is gonna snug. It's gonna be snug fit. It's gonna show off your curves, right? It's gonna do that kind of stuff. Uh, so this stuff hugs your skin, pulls the moisture off, gives you that immediate barrier to wick the moisture and help regulate body temperature. Tons of options out there like this. So whether it's actual base layer, whether it's your uh, UPF sun shirt that's tighter to your body that wicks the moisture, something to that effect is very important against your skin. So when I'm out there, I start with this. This goes on my legs, this goes on my top, and then that's what I build from. So that's my next to skin uh, base layer. You have other base layers like the Sub-Zero. Uh, this is going to be uh, for more warm conditions. This is going to be more of the fleece. Uh, some anglers might throw this over the top of this. Uh, I would warn you, that's going to be extremely warm. That's going to be uh, a very warm. I usually go with one or the other, so I might go with this on more extreme conditions uh, where this is going to need the added warmth properties. Uh, but for most situations, with the quality of outerwear we have, the quality of ice armor that we have, you can oftentimes just run with this underneath your sweatpants and sweatshirt and things like that. But you have other options. So you have the Sub-Zero base layer. You can see this is going to be more of a soft nap fleece. Uh, so depending on the situation, I'm running one or the other. But similar idea. Again, you want something that's going to keep your body temperature regulated. So super cool, super important pieces of the puzzle. Uh, next, things that I think a lot of anglers overlook are socks. A lot of anglers think they got to pile the socks on more socks the better you know that's not the case if you have a good quality pair of boots with a solid good quality liner you should only need one pair of socks you know sean canote who developed ice armor and has been the mastermind behind it i learned a lot from him and what he's taught me and and i've proven uh, i used to be that guy i used to think i needed to put two pairs of socks on all the time no matter the conditions it's going to be what I, what needs to be done to keep my feet warm you know what you get a good quality pair of boots with a good pair of liners you can wear the same socks you wear to play basketball in. You don't need all that. So what I do is I get a good quality pair of socks, whether it's like a merino wool, uh, these clam merino wool socks, I'll throw these on if I got a good quality pair of boot and liner and I'm good to go. Uh, if, you, if you don't have that or you're looking maybe for a little added oomph, what I would encourage you to do is you wanna put some kind of Thermalite sock against your skin. Same concept as the base layer, the outerwear. You want to have something that wicks moisture. So these thin thermaline socks are going to pull the moisture away from your feet and keep your feet dry, which is super important. Your feet generally get cold because they sweat. So when you put on all these heavy wool socks and multiple layers, your feet sweat. Then your feet get cold. You want to keep your feet from sweating. Like I said, a good pair of boots with a good set of liners are warm enough to keep your feet warm. When your feet are constricted and there's a lot of pressure and there's a lot of moisture buildup in there, they're going to get cold. 
it's something that we don't often think about, but holds true. So get a good pair of socks with a good quality pair of boots with a good liner, and most often than not, you need one pair. And I differentiate between, fluctuate between uh, a thinner merino wool or a thicker merino wool, again, depending on the weather conditions. But most often than not, I'm running one pair of socks. Uh, now, if you want to get after it and throw that thermal line, you certainly can. I'll be honest, I haven't worn a thermal line pair of socks in a couple years uh, since Sean taught me this technique. I'm running one of these, good pair of boots, good liner inside those boots, and away you go. Keeps, keeps things going well. So that's important. Think about the sock layering system, not just on your body, but on your feet as well. I'm going to talk about some other ways to trap uh, heat in. So as we know, heat rises. The, the hardest thing that anglers sometimes comprehend is you want to keep that heat in your body. There's different ways to do it. It's not just through your extremities. It's not just through your fingers and your toes, your hands and your feet. It's up through your garments, up through your neck. This here, the neck gaiter, in my opinion, is one of the most overlooked pieces of clothing for ice anglers. This goes over your head, hugs hugs my neck. You can see it's nice and tight. It's super comfortable. It's got that soft nap fleece on the inside. Hugs my neck. And what it does is it keeps all that moisture, or not moisture, all that heat trapped down. Keeps my neck comfortable, keeps the wind off my neck, off my throat, off my chin, but helps keep that warm air, that warm comfort inside and trapped inside your core to keep your body temperature regulated. So if you're not running that renegade neck gaiter, I'm telling you, I buy these for every one of my kids. All my kids bring these to school. I wear them almost every time on the ice, unless it's, you know, above 25 or 30. But if it's below freezing, I have this thing on all the time. You'll see on a lot of my pictures on social media that I'm running that neck gaiter, and I, and I swear by it. It keeps that comfort level right where you want it. So that's super important. Next, everyone knows me. I'm a hand muff guy. I've worn it for years. Another thing you won't see not hanging around my waist uh, on any picture on social media uh, is, is, a, is a hand muff. And Ice Armor came out with a new one now, a uh, new item this year. Uh, super comfortable. It just goes st straps around your waist. And you can see it's got cuffs on the edge. It sits right here. Uh, I use it to keep my hands warm. I use it to store plastics. I use it for a number of different things. Uh, it, it's You don't even know it's on you. It's just like a belt. It snaps on so you can do all the things you want. You can rip holes. You can set up houses. You can run on the machine. You can do all that stuff. But then when you need it, it's there. Uh, like I said, I store plastics, maybe an extra jig box. So I have things that are easily accessible. And one major tip is you take some of these Mr. Heater hand warmers, right? We've all seen these. You pull them. You shake them. They get air into them. They heat up. You tuck them inside this hand warmer and they'll last hours. I basically created my own hand warmer inside of this to where I'm outside in extreme conditions, whether it's a hole hopping, I find myself using less and less gloves because of this one-two punch system. So you take this, put it in there, within about 20 minutes, it's very warm inside there. It feels marvelous. So if you catch a fish, your hand's cold, it's damp, you put it in there, within seconds, it's like you just gave it a jolt of heat or if you're gonna be taking a break, I'm gonna be working one rod, I can do this, whatever, and I can even switch for a bit, dead stick, heat the hands up. This is a vital piece of equipment that I think every angler should own. If you're not running a hand muff, it's not a fanny pack, it's a hand muff. Get a hand muff, put some hand warmers in there. These are super cheap, you can find them at almost every bait store or fishing store. Buy a box of them, spend 20, 30 bucks for a box of them, whatever it is, put in the back of your truck. These are vital as well. These will go all day long running that. Super cool system to keep your body regulated. These are all, again, easy tips and tricks so you can stay on the ice and be mobile. I always get asked the question, how come you're never in a fish house? How come you're always on the ice? How do you do that? How are your hands not cold? Every picture you see, this is the stuff I'm doing. This is the stuff I'm doing in extreme conditions. Now, gloves. Um, there's a ton of gloves out there. I'm not gonna get too far into the weeds on that. Uh, you have all your mitts, your heavier gloves, your things like that. But I'm telling you, you gotta have a good fishing glove. And what I mean by a fishing glove is a pair of gloves that's tighter to your fingers, that's waterproof, that blocks the elements, that gives you the ability to still do things. So when we're in extreme conditions, you can only tough it out so much. You don't need to risk frostbite. This waterproof tactical glove from Ice Armor has been a lifesaver for me. I wear it. Uh, oh, most ice fishing season, I wear it during football season, I wear it in the boat. This is a phenomenal piece of equipment. It is waterproof, it's form-fitting, 
These, this is a, a pair of gloves that I can wear snug. You can see that snug against my hand. I can jig, I can do some light tying, I can grab fish, they're waterproof. They're not, they have some level of warmth. I mean, they're not gonna be an extremely warm glove, but they're gonna block the elements and take that chill off my hand. So if I need to keep my hands out doing certain things, and I don't want a bulky mitt or a bulky glove, this waterproof tactical glove is one that I think is vitally important. And another thing that a lot of anglers overlook is where you store your gloves. And what I mean is while you're fishing, if I'm not wearing this glove while I fish, zip, it's inside my jacket, I zip it back up, it's up against my core, it's keeping them warm. This isn't a bulky pair of gloves to where I need to worry about it being uncomfortable. I can tuck this inside my bibs, I can tuck this inside my jacket, my parka, I can tuck this wherever I want so it stays warm and out of the elements. And when I need a pair of gloves, I zip my jacket, my parka, my blackfish gale down, I grab the pair of gloves and I put them on. So you can store these inside your jacket. You don't need to put them inside a fish trap or have them someplace cold to where you put them on cold hands stay cold because the gloves are freezing so waterproof tactical glove or something like this that's a fishable fishable pair of gloves next other than getting into the outerwear i've been a huge believer of black fish gear for ice fishing uh, this is not intended to be a selling point it just really works i haven't worn an ice armor parka since blackfish came out i'm running gales uh, i'm running the storm skin now i'm running the vests i'm doing that kind of stuff it's a complete package. It's mobile, it's comfortable, it blocks the elements. Super nice. This year they have the vest. This is gonna be that soft nap fleece inside. Soft nap fleece hood, zippable vest, block the elements, windproof, very comfortable. This again goes to layering. So if you're a vest person, that's something I'm 100% gonna gravitate towards. Otherwise, what I've used the last several years is a pullover. Uh, this is the new Storm Skin. I've used the Gale 2.0, which is your soft shell, soft nap fleece. It's amazing how warm these are. Like I said, I haven't worn, worn an Ice Armor jacket. Uh, sorry, Ice Armor. Uh, just because of this stuff coming out, Ice Armor bibs over the top of everything. Then my Gale pullover. Uh, it's been the 2.0 in the past. Now I'm going to run some of the Storm Skin stuff. Same concept, soft nap fle not fleece, napped hood. Well, very comfortable, very mobile. Doesn't feel like you have a bulky jacket on. Uh, hugs your skin and the uh, storm skin is going to be the uh, free hanging fleece and tape seam so this is technically a waterproof garment i can zip out zip down the pockets super comfortable and soft inside there too another option for hand warmer go inside the pocket of your pullover and away you go so i'm running this type of setup uh, as my main outer work piece so again one giant giant system here to keep you warm i'm telling you this stuff is vital uh, if you follow some of these tips and find the right uh, formula for you on whether the, it's the next to skin base layer the sub zero your favorite pair of gloves get the neck gaiter get the hand muff have a good stocking cap get a good pair of boots with a good liner you do some of these things you're going to find yourself hole hopping and staying on the ice a lot longer and in more extreme conditions uh, most important tip of ice fishing in my opinion layering clothing Make it happen, stay warm this winter, and go catch some fish.